Following the Republic's victory during the Clone Wars, the remaining CIS holdouts were hunted down and wiped out under Sidious's command. But what would have happened if these holdouts weren't wiped out, and were instead allowed to survive well into Sidious's rule? Now, we've talked before in this series about if the CIS rulers managed to survive by escaping Sidious's grasp, however, I want to discuss if some of the minor holdouts survived. So, for this theory, we're going to say the timeline follows the same. The CIS Council are wiped out and the droid army is shut down. Sidious still rises to power and declares his new order. However, I'm going to say that some small CIS holdouts remain strong. Now, these CIS holdouts may have survived the initial order because they didn't heavily rely on droids, for example Umbara, or maybe they disabled the shutdown command, or have a high capability of making new droids themselves, or maybe they were just too far out of the way. So Sidious didn't really take them seriously, but regardless, in a mixed up change of heart, Sidious decides he doesn't care about the remainder of the CIS, and his resources would be better used establishing control over the Republic and hunting down the remaining Jedi. Now, this would be a very stupid move from Sidious for numerous reasons. Firstly, it's inevitable that they will cause problems for him. And secondly, defeating the CIS gained him a fierce reputation during his rule, so he would likely be seen as a far weaker ruler. But regardless, we're going to say that this new empire and these rogue separatist worlds go into a ceasefire. This means combat between the two parties stops. For this reason, we're going to say a dozen or so worlds and moons scattered around the Outer Rim that remained loyal to the CIS survive. So what would happen? Well, firstly, they would probably become autocracies, with the CIS military leaders on the world taking power to ensure the security of their worlds, and the continuation of the Separatist Alliance. Secondly, they would have to continue to expand their military presence. Worlds with droid factories would continue to churn out units at an alarming rate. This is to man the defensive put in place in case Sidious does choose to change his mind. Civilians would also possibly be drafted into militias to bolster numbers, and ultimately, these holdouts would basically be turned into police states. Meanwhile, although a ceasefire prevents fighting, there are still many things the Empire would do to ensure the CIS are unable to regain any power or influence across the galaxy, like enforcing blockade and outlawing any trades with the world through sanctions and tariffs. This would essentially be suffocating these worlds of resources, forcing a surrender, or making them effectively harmless. Whilst these worlds became economically choked under the Empire, many would likely begin to surrender. Citizens would probably overthrow their Separatist leaders and hand power over to the Empire. The idea being that if they don't have any resources so they can't eat or do anything, then eventually they will turn on their leaders. However, the more die-hard CIS worlds would probably start finding revenues from elsewhere in order to feed their people and maintain a standing military to keep the Empire at bay. For this reason, they'd likely begin relaxing many of their ethics and doing business with nefarious individuals and groups. Black market armaments, slavery, smuggling and spice dealing, these once proud CIS worlds would only have this to make revenue, and would eventually become a haven for the enemies of Sidious's regime. Rogue Senators, Jedi and Rebel Sympathisers all would likely start to call these holdouts home, because they're the only places they can go save from Sidious's grasp. Ultimately, I believe these holdouts could survive a fair amount of time, however I do believe that whenever dealing with the Empire, conflict would be inevitable. It would only be a matter of time till Sidious' regime comes to remove this fawn from its side. And simply put, no independent world would ever be able to stand up to the Empire's military. It simply doesn't have the resources. However, by the time the Empire did invade, the damage would have already been done. Allowing a separatist world to exist in the Empire proved Sidious's entire philosophy of a united galaxy under one Emperor wrong, and these worlds would have likely inspired countless people of a life outside of Sidious's grasp. So realistically, if the holdouts were allowed to survive, the Rebel Alliance would probably be stronger than ever. But what do you think? Could these holdouts survive? I personally think it'd be fascinating to see a world clinging on to the past of the CIS's glory days, especially in the face of destruction of the Endless Empire. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out my new series, You Versus, where we put you up against the most deadly forces in the Star Wars universe. Thanks for watching, please remember to like, share and sub, as it's really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Lord Guy and tick the bell for regular updates. Thanks again for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.